So in the span of an entire year, we got not one, not two, not three, but four Groundhog Day type of movies. Four. That is insane. Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review When We First Met. So When We First Met is directed by Ari Sandel, the film is written by John Whittington, and the film stars Adam Devine, Alexander Daddario, Shelley Hinnick, Andrew Batchelor, and Robbie Amell. So When We First Met tells the story of Noah, who really likes this girl named Avery. However, the problem is that he got friend zoned and now she's married to this guy named Max and obviously Noah really wants to be with the girl of his dreams and when he has the opportunity to actually travel back in time to the moment he met her back in Halloween of 2014 he does so that way he can actually get with Avery only learning there are consequences to this whole time traveling thing. Before I review when we first met my guest star Kevin Falk is going to be reviewing when we first met so Kevin take it away man thank you Tony and hey guys it's Kevin again once again very excited to be on Tony's channel for his Valentine's Day reviews so when we first met I was very on the fence with this movie as I am with most Netflix films nowadays because if you guys know, especially this year, they have not really been impressing me lately. They've made some okay films, they've made some really bad ones as well, but they have yet to make a film this year that I actually really enjoyed. They made one I barely enjoyed, that being Before I Wake, but they have yet to really make one that I truly really uh, liked, and uh, I was really hoping when we first met could be that film. I thought this did definitely have some potential. Anything with time travel, I am always down for. I'm happy to say that, yes, when we first met is actually what I wanted it to be for once. This actually is a very well done Netflix film, also a very good Valentine's Day film that I overall really did enjoy. And we're gonna get into right now, starting off with the cast. I'm right off the bat, that is definitely one of the selling points of this film. The cast here are all very talented. These are all actors I very much do enjoy, and gratefully the film does really use them to their advantage. I think everyone really did a pretty great job here. Let's first talk about Adam Devine as the character of Noah, who isn't really someone I've seen as a leading man before. The only time I've really seen him as one is in Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates, but he really did a great job here. I really did enjoy his character. Sure, we've seen this character before, for, you know, sort of like the low life who is a bit of an alcoholic that clearly uh, isn't really in the greatest spot in his life and has a lot of regrets and things like that. But Divine really uh, has fun with this character, you can tell. There's a lot of stuff that goes down with this character that you do kind of feel bad for him. You can tell that he's someone who really wishes his life could have turned out better, and I did really like where he went throughout the film. There's a lot of ridiculous stuff that Noah does get himself entangled with, obviously given the nature of the time travel um, plot line, you know, there's a lot of ridiculous things that happen to him, but like I said, Divine really does rise to the occasion. He's a lot of fun to watch here. He definitely has a lot of fun moments. Also does some emotional moments pretty well too. There is actually a pretty big arc that Noah does undergo throughout this film, and like I said, I thought Divine really did a pretty great job here. I definitely did enjoy his role overall, and uh, definitely he did impress me for sure. And then Alexandra Daddario in this movie, she plays a very interesting role because, yes, she technically is playing this character that um, is supposed to have chemistry with Divine, but as we know, these two didn't end up together, and there is definitely a good reason why. So, Daddario does a really good job of making sure that her and Divine do have believable chemistry, but not too much chemistry. They have chemistry enough where you can see why these two have become friends, but not really 
the romantic chemistry, and I did think they did a really good job with that overall. She definitely does some really great stuff in this movie. I definitely really did enjoy her here. Uh, Daddario continues to show why she is a really great actress, and even when she's in some really, you know, movies, some really shitty movies or things that really weren't that great, she still is really great. Thankfully, she, like I said, was also really great here. I thought she did a really good job in this film overall, and uh, yeah, I thought she also was really good. The rest of the cast here as well, I thought also was really good. Shelly Hennig, it's cool to see her in something that's not a horror movie or Teen Wolf, but she was definitely really good here as Avery's best friend, Carrie. Where they end up going with her is very predictable. We'll get to that when we get to the writing and things like that, but I thought she definitely was really great. Who really surprised me, though, was Andrew Bachelor because I have not been a fan of Andrew Bachelor or King Batch, however you really want to refer to him. I have not really been a fan of him, needless to say, in any of the films I've seen. The only films I've seen him in are Fifty Shades of Black, Meet the Blacks, and The Babysitter, all of which I thought he was absolutely horrible in. This is the first film where I actually thought he was genuinely good, and I think that's because they toned him down a little bit. He wasn't as, um, obnoxious as he was in those films, and he was definitely fun to watch here. I thought he definitely was really good, and Robbie Amell, once again, does have a really good character. Coming off the heels of The Babysitter, this is definitely a much better role for him. He, I really did enjoy his character overall. You can tell, like, he definitely is having fun. That's something I'll say about all the actors here. You can definitely tell they're having a really good time, and I thought the ensemble as a whole just worked very well together, and that is something I will absolutely give this film. Now let's get to the directing and the writing, because the directing right off the bat from Ari Sandel, it's nothing you haven't really seen before, but I thought his directing overall was really good. It was definitely a lot of fun to watch. This is from the same director of The Duff, and I really did see a similar style here. There's a lot of uh, just really silly humor in there, but there also is some smart humor, and I was definitely laughing quite a lot throughout. I thought he definitely did handle the comedy quite well here. Um, and surprisingly, though, the dramatic moments is really what surprised me. There is actually some really good emotion and heart to this film, and I thought he handled that pretty much just as well as he did, um, the comedy. I thought those two elements, when coupled together, really did work very well here, and I was definitely very impressed by that. Let's get to the writing, because I'll say right off the bat, this is not the best writing in the world. Again, you've seen this movie a hundred times before. There really is nothing all that different here. I'm sure Tony will probably agree with me that there really is nothing all that different when it comes to the writing, but it is different enough where I could really enjoy it. And I did think the story overall definitely was very interesting, because it is different from what we've seen. Most times in the story, it is, they go through just this one time, and and this causes some sort of ripple effect within the time they're living in. And this movie does do that, but it's a bit different because of the fact that he's going to this one specific event, and then he'll go back to the present, and, you know, then he has to keep doing it over and over again. And I think it was definitely a lot of fun to watch in that regard. I thought it definitely did work very well there. So it's taking the Groundhog Day approach, but it's also taking the, uh, you know, Back to the Future approach, and I definitely really did enjoy that. In fact, this this movie very well knows what it is. It knows that it is a bit dumb. It knows that it is pretty silly. In fact, there is a Back to the Future reference, and it was quite funny. I definitely really did love the way that it was done. So, like I said, the writing here, it's definitely very fun. It's not trying to be anything amazing or, you know, anything that deep. It's just trying to be a fun movie, and I do think it succeeded pretty well at that. I will say the film is definitely predictable. There is definitely uh, a sense of predictability here, uh, especially when you run to Shelley Hennig's character. Once you find out, you know, what's going on between her and Noah, and once they have some scenes together, it's pretty obvious to tell where the film is going to go. It really wasn't that surprising in that way. But I will say, the direction the film did take, I was overall happy with. I did think it was definitely the right um, way for the film to go, and, uh, the reasoning for Noah, you know, wanting Avery so bad, why he wants to be with Avery, it actually is really well done. It's not just something really dumb, 
there is a legit reason there, and I did definitely think that was well handled overall. And some of the uh, smaller characters, like, for example, Ethan's character, Robbie Amell, you know, he starts off the film, and you think he's just, like, this perfect guy who he's just really the ideal boyfriend, husband, you know, there's really nothing wrong with him, but you see he does have a bit of insecurity in him. There definitely is something that he's going through, and I did think they got into his character pretty well there. I did think that definitely was very well handled. Without spoiling anything, there is definitely, you know, some things do get changed, and there are definitely some pretty big reveals that he finds out, and I thought they were overall very well done. It's a movie that kind of forces you to pay attention that way, and I did really like the way that the uh, writer tried to hold the viewer's attention throughout the whole film. Really, my only complaints when it comes to film is, like I said, it is very predictable. There really was nothing here that I was very surprised by at all. It does some things differently, but for the most part, it is very similar to things you've seen before, but that didn't really bother me because again when I go into a romantic comedy I'm expecting for it to be somewhat predictable so that really didn't surprise me at all and that really wasn't something that was a hindrance. What was is this one specific time he goes um, you know back and there is this one thing that happens uh, between him and Avery I'm not going to say what it is but it gets really silly and almost a bit too cartoony, and the film, like I said, overall was very fun, but this was one of the moments where it was kind of cringy, and I did think that they did go a little too over the top when it came to that, but other than that, there really wasn't anything that flat out bothered me. Um, that was really the only thing that I thought, oh, that really wasn't that funny. Also, the ending, while I did overall enjoy it, the way it was executed, I don't know, it just felt a little bit haphazard, and it felt like they were kind of running out of time, like, the w there's this direction the movie goes, and I really did like it, I really did love where the movie did end up going, but what ends up happening after that, you know, there are things that are very well set up, but again, it just felt a little bit too rushed, and I do think that they could have maybe, uh, if the movie was maybe a few minutes longer, then maybe that could have definitely helped them overall. I really did enjoy when we first met overall. I think it's a very solid romantic comedy. It's not really breaking any new ground. It's not really anything that extraordinary. You've seen this quite a few times before, but if you're looking for just a really fun, cute romantic comedy. I think you will overall enjoy this. It's got some really talented actors who really are at the top of their game here, especially Adam Devine. He really does a great job here and definitely shows a lot of potential for sure. It is definitely the first Netflix movie in a while that I can legitimately say I enjoyed. And if you guys know my frustration, that is definitely a huge improvement when it comes to this distributor overall. And oh, I am overall going to give when we first met a B. So over guys, it for my portion of the When We First Met review. Thank you once again, Tony, for having me on. Either way, guys, uh, thank you once again. And now, Tony, back to you. Thank you so much, Kevin, for reviewing When We First Met. Now, when it comes to When We First Met, I was actually um, looking forward to the movie a little bit. And in my humble opinion, it's cute, but it's not good. Uh, and there's two different kinds of cutes, granted. There's the, okay, that was cute, okay, um, or there's the, oh, that was really cute, I really enjoyed that. This goes more in the, eh, it's cute, like, it's a cute little movie, um, I didn't have a bad time watching it. I know this film is getting really bad reviews. I definitely don't hate it anywhere near as much, but really when it comes down to it, I just don't see myself watching it again, and I do think it is honestly a missed opportunity. So to start off with my positives with this film, I will say I really like the performances. You have Adam Devine, you have Alexander Daddario, you have Robbie Amell, you have Andrew Bachelor, and you have Shelley Hennig. Those are really the five actors you follow. And honestly, I thought they all get, did a really good job. Adam Devine, I thought was really good in this film. Definitely just very 
fun and just very enjoyable and I did enjoy following his character I thought he portrayed his character very well like obviously he does nail being like his usual over-the-top and divine but when he does get more serious in the film I did think that he did act very well Alexandra Daddario she's really good in this film along with Adam Devine I did really enjoy her character she just had a really nice screen presence Robbie Amell uh, was also really good here. I really like Robbie Amell, um, and I've liked him in pretty much everything. Well, maybe not last year's The Babysitter. Uh, God, I hate that film, and he was not good in that film at all. But really, aside from that, I've liked him in pretty much everything I've seen him in, and this is no different. I really liked him in this film as Max, the guy that Alexander Daddario's character is actually married to. You know, Max is just like this very nice guy. He's pretty much, I guess, Mr. Perfect, um, and I thought he did a very good job playing that character. You also have Shelley Hennig, who I actually really liked her character, and I don't want to say too much about her character because she was definitely one of the more interesting parts about this film but she did a very good job I did like where the film took her character um, I didn't think they were gonna do anything with her um, but as the film keeps going they do actually do something with her that had me going okay that's a pretty cool film I really like that and then last but not least you have Andrew Bachelor who's also known as King Batch this is probably so far his most enjoyable performance I actually did really like him as uh, Noah's best friend. When it comes to the time travel in this film, I did like the time travel. It was pretty cool. And I did think that some of the writing when it comes to the humor was very well done. And funny enough, this is from the same writer, and you guys probably won't believe it when I say this. This is the same writer of the Lego Batman movie and the Lego Ninjago movie. The two Lego movies that came out last year. So to really see him write a script that was just really subpar at, at best was pretty disappointing. But there were some moments where I did think he nailed the writing and some of the comedic timing was actually very well done. Not to mention that when we get to the third act of the film, that was actually my favorite part about the film. The third act was actually very well done um, because of where the film went. Even though it was predictable, I think it worked for the story and definitely the film got a whole lot more interesting from there. The cinematography is really good looking. I did really like the cinematography. It was very nice. And Ari Sandal, I believe that's how you pronounce the director's name. This is from the same director of The Dove, uh, a movie I really liked. And I thought this director did a very good job directing this film. I did appreciate the fact that the film had the message about consequences and how if you change a certain something, that other person's life is going to be different. Like, sure, you may have the better life if you change it around, but what about that other person? However, my problem with this film is that, honestly, it does get pretty tedious after a while. It's not extremely boring like I wouldn't say I was bored to tears watching this film or anything but after like maybe the first 10 15 minutes I just found myself not being engaged that much now of course there were moments that I found to be funny like it had its moments where I'm like okay that's funny and it had its little moments of me being interested but really aside from that I was not into the film all that much and then even though the time traveling stuff is really cool and all some of the things that happen during this time travel are just really really outrageous it gets really over the top it's not even the funny kind of over the top like they just really take over the top to the next level and it just really wasn't working for me although this is a comedy most of the comedy really did not work for me it wasn't anything bad it's not like I cringed uh, when the comedy fell flat but I was just sitting there going, am I really supposed to be laughing because this being a comedy and this had the potential to be really funny and all, um, there wasn't really that much that made me laugh. Yes, some moments did make me laugh, but not enough 
really made me laugh in this film. It just feels like they don't have any idea what to do. It feels, it really feels like they're running out of steam as the film keeps going. It was just the same thing. I was just kind of, kind of getting tired. Um, it wasn't like something like, let's say Happy Death Day, where Happy Death Day, I felt like the whole repeating something over and over again, they managed to keep that very refreshing and it never felt tired, at least in my opinion, while with when we first met, things just don't really pick up or really have a clear clue on what to do with the story until once we got to the third act where, yeah, I just found myself more invested on what was happening. And even though I do really like the final act of the film, I do feel like the ending itself is just very uh, rushed. Like it was really rushed at the ending. Like, okay, this is the end of the film. This certain event happens and the movie just cuts to the end credits. Like, okay, the third act was actually keeping my attention. And then when the film ends there, I'm all like, well, okay then. Um, it would have been nice if they kind of fleshed out that certain ending just a little bit more, but it's like, once that happens, it just ends. And I forgot to mention this, but not only is the film really losing steam after a while with the story, the movie itself is just really generic. And I don't have a problem with something being generic if it's executed the right way, but I didn't really feel the execution was that strong in this film. It wasn't anything horrible, but it just wasn't really anything that strong. So because of that, the fact that this is a generic time travel film really bothered me and I surprisingly thought this friendship between Adam Devine and Alexander Daddario like as far as their chemistry goes surprisingly even that didn't really do it for me it's not like <clears throat> they had bad chemistry but I just wasn't really like hooked into it either and I would think for something like this that's something that would get me sucked into it and I'll say this they had maybe like two good moments they had like maybe two good believable friendship type of moments but aside from that I surprisingly did not get invested with their friendship as much as I should have and probably as much as the movie was hoping I personally would. Overall, When We First Met is an okay Netflix original movie. It's definitely not the worst. It is far from being the worst. It's not even the most mediocre. There are far more mediocre Netflix original movies than this one, but it's just cute. It's okay. It's all right. It's there. It's fine. Uh, it has its entertaining parts. I like the time traveling scenes and I do like the characters, but the script was just so generic. There wasn't really much to it and there was a lot, po a lot of potential for it to be better, but the film just doesn't really go anywhere until the final act where, although yes, the turn it took was predictable, it actually had me interested. And I honestly wish the rest of the movie was like that final act. I was entertained um, to an extent, but I wouldn't say I was necessarily like really, really enjoying the film. Uh, yeah, it's all right. I'm gonna give When We First Met two and a half out of four stars. So everyone, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about When We First Met. And I want to thank Kevin Falk so much for coming here to review When We First Met. He's a very cool dude, you guys. He has a great channel. If you guys want to check out his channel, I will leave a link in the description down below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power. I want to know what I